Hi welcome to Uptalk. In this video we are gonna see Workday LMS. Before that let's see what Uptalk is. Uptalk is a e-learning platform that offers live, interactive training sessions with real-time expert faculty members Our courses flexible and can be taken at your convenience. Uptalk is a perfect platform for you, so make use this platform and get start your career. To never miss an update like, share and subscribe. Starting with our topic Workday LMS. A learning management system, LMS, is a software program function or online innovation used to organize, apply, and evaluate a specific discovering procedure. Typically, a learning control unit supplies a trainer to provide and generate information, screen pupil involvement, and assess pupil efficiency. This video will be covered by Mr. Amit. Let's get started. kind of topics that will be discussed and uh, <clears throat> uh, kind of um, the, you know workflow kind of uh, uh, task you know what will be performing in terms of uh, this course duration you know we'll be seeing see here um, uh, introduction to workday learning so we'll be seeing um, kind of terminologies what is the frequency of uh, uh, mostly used terminologies that are used in workday learning we'll be knowing that one and kind of security components of workday learning what kind of domains what kind of security is needed uh, for implementing workday learning uh, we'll be seeing that one and <clears throat> there is a concept called uh, extended enterprise learning okay uh, we'll just get uh, kind of introduced to that extended enterprise learning module and uh, see how um, that differs between workday learning and extended learning and uh, what are the customers and who are the customers will be going for extended enterprise learning will be uh, looking into that area and workday drive <clears throat> Workday Drive, uh, we'll just see how uh, when you're actually loading courses into Workday, how Workday Drive comes into picture and what kind of uh, you know, work that you'll be doing um, to, in order to load those courses into Workday. We'll be seeing, um, we'll be touching, you know, the brief um, uh, definition of Workday Drive. <coughs> mm -hmm. And uh, after this, uh, we'll be getting into core configurations uh, what kind of reports that are available in workday and how those are attached to workday dashboards and uh, <clears throat> kind of uh, uh, learning administrator uh, dashboard and learning how a learner can get into workday courses and all you know there will be a kind of dashboards and how those dashboards can be configured and all you will be seeing those dashboards and workspace <clears throat> workspace in the sense uh, um kind of uh, uh you know regular uh, kind of uh, configurations uh, creating courses creating topics creating uh, security segments uh, uh create, performing a kind of a core configurations um uh, in learning you know we'll be seeing here and building learning elements so when you wanted to build a um, course there has to be a kind of topic behind that and there has to be a lesson behind that so all those things you know will be the, getting in um, the workday learning elements so what type of elements are there and uh, how to define each element all those things you know will be seeing here and then you know will be <clears throat> will be seeing a kind of checklist uh, the, the available uh, security groups, the available domains in learning area, the available business process, how to configure a business process, how a kind of security can be associated to business process, how a business process works. We'll take two or three examples of business process and configure that business process and see how it works, how to define a condition rule to the business process. All those things you know, we'll be seeing uh, in core configurations uh, according to organization requirements. We'll be be taking you know from my past experience I'll be taking a few configurations as per uh, uh, you know customer requirement and we'll be configuring those uh, configurations since tenant <clears throat> Here, uh, this is the main uh, area you know, where we uh, will be focusing on the security domains. So, what are all the available domains that are available uh, that are uh, you know uh, capturing uh, workday data and um, 
overall you know what kind of business process are there and how business process differs when you are performing uh, learning activities in workday all those things you know we'll be seeing uh, in core configurations and we'll also create few security groups and see how we can attach those security groups to <coughs> and see how we can attach those security groups to the learning administrator or learner and how that makes difference and all you know we'll be seeing in core configurations and <clears throat> campaigns and programs campaigns is nothing but uh, how you assign uh, when you create a course how you assign that course to <clears throat> your group of employees or new hires whenever you know few team members are joining your organization and if you wanted to automatically assign the any of uh, mandatory course like code of conduct or uh, any of uh, compliance courses if you wanted to assign it to employee who can perform uh, who can take that course uh, uh, you know after uh, their onboarding or you know uh, during a particular period of uh, compliance uh, training they can um, create a campaign and uh, trigger that campaign to all the intended employees so we'll be seeing all those uh, creation of campaigns <clears throat> And also programs so we have, uh, there are kind of uh, you know courses lessons and all and uh, how the how courses lessons will be deferring to programs and what program holds and how to assign program and if you assign the program and if employee is uh, undergoing a training uh, to that program how what kind of support is needed there and what kind of questions you'll be having there those kind of uh, things you know we'll be seeing because assigning course is easy assigning lesson is easy assigning campaign is easy but assigning programs you know will uh, create some kind of confusion to employees where you'll be getting um, a lot of questions you know when you assign programs so we'll be seeing um, we'll be trying to know what are the programs and when you assign program to employee what they have to do and what considerations that, that they have to make on all you know we'll be seeing uh, uh, in advanced learning elements and finally you know we'll be getting into eib eib is nothing but uh, enterprise interface builder which is a uh, inbuilt work the integration inbound tool <clears throat> This is actually used uh, uh, during implementation and uh, most of the customers will be following uh, the EAB process you know, to load anything related to learning from external system to Workday. And if you're a partner company, a, 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 a concept called iLoads uh, will be available in the place of EIB. iLoads and EIB will be performing the same job, <clears throat> loading data into Workday. Um, Partner company will be using iLoad and customer company will be using um, um, EIB. Okay, basically we'll be creating an EIB. We'll be taking in you know, a few examples like create like as a loading courses or loading instructors or loading or enrolling the employees into that particular course. Any of for example, you know, we'll be seeing and how EIB can be created, what kind of troubleshooting methods you know that you'll be following and how data can be inserted into Workday. We'll be seeing uh, in EIB. <coughs> Also, we'll uh, be covering a uh, few. Yeah. Sorry. What is the difference between I loads and EIBs? Both the same, but the tool is different. I load is performed to load the data from external system into Workday through partner company. Partners uh, like Deloitte, Accenture, IBM will be having a, a specific access to iLoads, but customer company will not have access to iLoads. They have to go with EIB. So partner partner company consultants will be using EIB to load the data into Workday. Any module, not only learning, any other module, <clears throat> benefits, mm -hmm. payroll, recruiting, uh, learning, curriculum, any of the model if they are actually implementing and loading external system data legacy system data into workday they'll be using the uh, i loads to extract that and to pick the data and dump into the workday but in aib will be uh, mostly customers will be using <clears throat> like uh, okay. you know walmart uh, linkedin all these are customers okay these companies will not be having access to i loads they'll be having access to only eib so uh, all the customers you know will be performing um, data uploads i can say into workday mm. through eib okay got it so we'll also see a couple of reports uh, related to learnings 
what kind of uh, reports are available for learning and um, how to extract data and how to you know enhance those reports uh, available in learning area we'll be seeing uh, those reports as well so overall uh, this is a kind of course content that we'll be covering and uh, <clears throat> we'll be getting a kind of uh, uh, exposure to both technical as well as you know configuration areas in this um, training duration when i say technical it it includes um, reporting it includes uh, EIBs, it includes uh, security, it includes business process. Okay. Uh, I see many things uh, like uh, mass enrollments or uh, validations are not here. Which those, will be covered are with come, those are all comes under core configurations. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. <clears throat> enrolling a candidate into learning course and um, uh, learning validations and all comes in uh, core configurations okay perfect so these are all the kind of course content you know that we'll be covering during uh, this uh, uh, you know period whatever uh, schedule period that we have defined okay so the main objective you know that we'll be having um, during um, this learning uh, training is uh, so <clears throat> make you a kind of flexible to handle learning environment and uh, you should be able to define um, uh, uh, the difference between workday learning and your uh, any kind of traditional LMS applications like since you already have an idea on success factors how we know you can differentiate between these two systems you should be able to understand in terms of uh, AI in terms of accessing data in terms of assigning courses in terms of uh, you know uh, extracting data through reports in in terms of you know uploading data into workday all these things you know when you perform those things in workday uh, you can be you, you should be able to identify a kind of uh, differentiate between systems so um, that kind of understanding you'll be getting and uh, <clears throat> Uh, you should be able to build your learning components like create course blended course digital course a program and um, if there is any kind of specific requirement of uh, creating courses through you know which are specific to cost associated uh, you know components will be there so configuring those things and all you know you'll be seeing here <coughs> and um, what kind of inducer uh, support activities that you will be performing performing you'll be seeing and uh, uh, media management activities when you're actually loading courses um, what kind of um, prerequisite that you have when you're loading courses and um, how you're actually associating media to your course that you are loading all those things you know you'll be seeing when we are performing EIB uploads and all <laughs> okay okay and uh, so basic uh, terminology that we have in workday learning which we you know through entire this course you know we'll be frequently listening all these terms uh, in workday so you should be aware of these terms uh, which will allow you to relate anything you know that we are discussing mass enrollment <clears throat> Mass enrollment is nothing but you know if you wanted to assign courses to any group of employees or um, the, uh, any group of uh, you know organizations if you wanted to assign um, one course to a bunch of employees you know you'll be having a, a task called mass enrollment there you know you'll be enrolling those candidates into that particular learning and uh, you have an option to make this course as a required learning for them or non required learning for them you have an option to make this uh, uh, make this uh, you know the um, required learning area when you are actually assigning course to learners okay learners are nothing but employees so we'll be um, seeing um, we'll be listening something called learners learners are nothing but employees in workday okay in core it's sim we'll call it we'll call them as an employees but in workday learning we'll be calling employees as learners <laughs> okay now um, when we assign yeah, go ahead. We all can we also uh, have control as to when we want to trigger the notification of assignment or send reminders. Uh, do we have the control of uh, configuring that? Yeah. 
so notifications is completely will be under your control so if an enrollment happens the moment enrollment happens if you wanted to trigger a notification you can define a business process definition for that one and um, the moment uh, enrollment completes the moment enrollment um, you have you clicked on enrollment submit button notification will be triggered and who should be responsible for that notification that will be in our control whether it is employee whether it is manager whether it is learning administrator who has to get a notification will be completely under your control you can configure that one and sending notifications and sending not notifications in the sense um, uh, sending reminders and um, the, you know based on the due date you know, that it will be configured sending reminders all this you know will be done through campaigns I told you right, there is a term called campaign so we'll be creating a campaign and uh, we'll be picking um, a group of employees who has to be under this campaign and we'll be selecting the particular course and then you know once you submit uh, it will be asking uh, when you wanted to trigger uh, a reminder notification what is the due date that it has to be once you assign you know what is the due date all these things you know campaign will be asking you'll be providing those details and you'll be submitting um, that campaign campaign will be taking care of for sending notifications and uh, if you schedule that campaign <clears throat> campaign um, the have two options one is upfront if you wanted to run now it will actually uh, when you click on run now it will um, send a notification now and it will be um, getting all the learning information to the candidate but if you wanted to schedule you don't want it to in, uh, keep any kind of manual intervention automatically based on due date campaign has to send a kind of reminder uh, all those things you know you can schedule a campaign and campaign will be taking care of all um, the sending notifications based on uh, due date and sending reminders all these things campaign will be taking care mm -hmm. <clears throat> so campaigns um, up apart from campaigns if it is like a what i understand is campaign is can be a group of courses or something right and it uh, a group, it can be assigned a group of learners a course can be assigned to a group of learners is it yes yeah campaign okay if you wanted to send a notification what is the difference be, uh, if you mass enroll or assign it through campaigns in that case because that is also mass, mass enrollment enroll. is a task. Mass enrollment is a task actually. You type uh, mass enrollment um, in Workday search bar, and you'll be getting a yes. list of employees. You'll be selecting those team members, and you'll be submitting. Yes. Enrollment will happen. Okay, but campaign is not the campaign is different. So you'll be picking a um, you'll be creating a report in the background. You know there will be a report. Who all uh, let's say um, automatically based on um, uh, you know employees hire date employee whenever employees joins to the organization and uh, uh, you know campaign has to be triggered with the course you know that has to be assigned a, a mandatory compliance course will be there okay it has to be assigned to all uh, uh, new hires so you will be you know generally <laughs> learning administrators you know whenever they have to know every day so who is the new hire you know who has joined the organization and mm -hmm. uh, you know assign this compliance course but in order to avoid this kind of uh, looking around we'll be creating a report in the background whenever employees he joins okay uh, whenever employee joins to the organization uh, report has to capture that information and it has to give this information to campaign and campaign will be selecting um, today there will be five employees okay the campaign will be picking mm -hmm. those five employees and assign those uh, assign a mandatory compliance training uh, uh, to that employee and will be sending a kind of notification uh, thanks for joining this organization as part of compliance uh, compliance program this course has to be complete within the uh, within this date of your joining you are supposed to complete this training so we'll be sending a kind of notification and also we'll be sending a kind of due uh, due date kind of checkbox and a reminder kind of checkbox we'll be selecting and it will be keep on sending uh, reminders uh, after two days after three days after four days kind of thing and tomorrow again you know two employees have joined report will be giving this information to campaign and campaign will be sending the same kind of information to those two employees mm -hmm. so uh, learning at administrator will not manually you know get into employee profile and see the higher date and assign these courses so campaign will be taking care of uh, you know the, the based on the report in the background it will be picking the it will be picking those uh, new hires and it will be sending to uh, uh, sending all the course information or learning information to employee 
so this is one uh, one one way you know kind of campaign can be utilized but there are you know multiple uh, ways or multiple requirements that campaign can be used okay so, so now you know i said a kind of new hype thing but um, <clears throat> let's say code of conduct is a kind of training or sexual harassment is a kind of compliance course which every employee has to take for every six months okay this is a kind of you know learning rule that in organization have so you'll be creating a campaign and you'll be selecting um, you'll be scheduling this campaign for every six months so automatically without the learning administrator involvement for every six months uh, this campaign will be sending a kind of notification to all employees throughout the organization stating um, the you know setting a kind of information that this course has to be completed within this period and based on the reminders in it, it will be sending reminder notifications to team members okay so what i understand is mass enrollment is if you already have a set of learners you can enroll people to a particular course for that and mm -hmm. campaign is mainly to assign uh, for a dynamic group of people, right? Not a static yeah. group. So it's a dynamic yeah. group if you join us, come in, or anything like that, or a set of mm -hmm. uh, group of people. So dynamically, the system will calculate and it will assign, and you can also have a, a notification set up as per your uh, requirements yes. uh, as to yes. how often it needs yeah. to trigger. Yeah. That yeah. is the difference. Yeah. So the, in the back, Mass enrollment is directly enrolling them uh, to the trainings, right? Yes. Assign, yes. Uh, this campaign is just assigning, not enrolling them. So it is two different things, right? Yes, mass enrollment generally, you know, learning administrators will be having, uh, you know, this mass enrollment. They'll be assigning uh, any of, um, uh, you know, a team member, group of team members to that one. And campaign is nothing but, you know, in the background, there will be a, there will be a kind of custom report whatever data that custom report will be giving uh, to campaign it will be picking those team members and it will be sending all the notification information they will be having an option what information has to be shared to an employee before uh, you share this information so you have body message you have subject you have uh, kind of email uh, you know you'll be getting a kind of email to your outlook stating that uh, <clears throat> Um, this is a course that has been assigned to you and you have to complete within this due date and to access that uh, course please click on this link and this will be directing to workday learning and from there you know you can um, access uh, that particular course and uh, get it completed within this due date kind of information you will be giving in campaign and the campaign will be taking care of sending multiple notification based on the due date or a reminder uh, information that you have opted when you are creating campaign okay okay and what is the difference between notification and an alert <clears throat> so notification will be uh, you know configured in business process business process is nothing but in a sequence of tasks that will be generated um, as per the configuration and there you know you'll be having a kind of notification um, configuration so you'll be uh, selecting notification to whom you have to send a notification and um, uh, and what basis you order to send a notification based on completion based on um, uh, you know based on um, triggering trigger on status based on completion based on failure based on uh, completed event if you wanted to trigger a notification you'll be having that option in business process alert is nothing but uh, alert is nothing but you know where it can be sent a kind of notification to all the employees so if you wanted to send uh, <clears throat> alert is um, kind of you know something similar to campaign but alert can only send a notification but campaign you know can be campaign will be actually holding custom report and it will be assigning all the messages that will be giving and uh, it will be sending a kind of uh, reminders uh, campaign will be sending a kind of remind but alert you know will be not sending a kind of uh, reminders you need to schedule it <clears throat> 
let's say uh, you wanted to send any kind of custom message to any of uh, learners mm -hmm. okay uh, for new hires example i can say okay for new hires okay. you know if you wanted to uh, automatically this is one time alert cannot um, uh, uh, alert cannot look for uh, dynamically you know, for all the new hires but campaign can look let's say your report today it has returned five members and tomorrow two members are there so your campaign you know, will be able to identify those five new hires today and those two new hires tomorrow but your alert cannot be a you know alert cannot identify dynamically to whom notification has to trigger it is a one-time uh, thing or uh, let's say 60 members are there in your team for all the 60 mm. members you wanted to send a notification for every one month or for every six months alert will be a kind of feasible thing you know the, which you can configure because you are already defining those 60 members in a report and for uh, your alert can capture those 60 members from a report and send a notification to all these 60 members but campaign tomorrow today you have 60 members and tomorrow you have uh, 50 members tomorrow and day after tomorrow you have 80 members so like that campaign you know will be picking whatever report is returning uh, you know based on the uh, you know filters that you will be defining to all those things you know the campaign will be sending campaign will not send a notification <coughs> <coughs> To already, uh, you know, to whom it has already sent. Today, uh, you know, f uh, five members have joined, and tomorrow two members have joined. So it will not send notification to the people who have joined yesterday. It will send only notification to people who have joined on that particular day. So based on mm. the information that campaign will be capturing, it will dynamically send all this information to employees. But configuring alert. In the background, the same custom report will be there, but as I said, it will be not sending a um, notification based on uh, uh, you know data that has to repeatedly sent. It will send to the same group of numbers uh, whenever you run it. Alert will be sending uh, notifications to um, same employees, whatever customer custom report is sending, whenever you wanted to run. Today you have sent uh, 60 members and tomorrow you are sending uh, uh, to few more members, you know, whatever report is giving it will not repeatedly send based on your, uh, you know, defining uh, your um, alert will be sending a kind of notification, but <clears throat> in the background for campaign for alert in the background, there should be a report that has to give information to these two. And some mm -hmm. customers what they'll be doing is they'll be actually create a campaign and uh, <clears throat> they'll uh, run a campaign first they'll be sending a kind of uh, um, a kind of uh, alert you know to their outlook stating that uh, uh, this is a kind of uh, campaign that you are getting assigned and um, uh, you know following is a kind of link you know that you can go through uh, to the compliance training and all you know they'll be giving in alert and once the alert is sent next day you know they'll be sending a kind of campaign okay once the alert is sent uh, kind mm -hmm. of campaign you know will be scheduled next day so that you know campaign will be sending a kind of all the links related to learning and uh, <clears throat> employee can uh, click on that link and they can navigate to work the learning and take the training so both are same but only thing is um, alert you know uh, is alert can be used across workday not only specific mm -hmm. to learning but campaign is specific to learning it is used oh, okay. only in learning Okay, alert can be used yeah. in any of uh, module in any of uh, you know notification that you wanted to send to employee. It is sent to Outlook actually. Uh, when you okay. configure alert, it will be you'll be actually giving a kind of to which who all the security groups you know that you will be defining. Let's say your HR administrator, okay, and uh, people who are under HR administrator, you'll be giving a security group when you're actually wanting to send a notification to all HR administrators. So when you uh, when you trigger alert to all HR administrators, you'll be getting a kind of notification whatever you wanted to send. And similarly, uh, if you wanted to send uh, throughout the organization one kind of static information or generic information or update update regarding to your work day or anything, okay, you'll be selecting employee as self a kind of security group and uh, trigger the alert which will be sending to every employee in the organization with the information that you have inserted in uh, alert. Okay, so uh, in campaigns, is campaign only used for assigning 
uh, a particular course or uh, a program and then sending out reminders uh, sorry right yes. sending out notification or yes. is can it also be used to uh, recommend not really assign recommend some trainings no 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 campaign <coughs> campaign will not recommend anything it will uh, actually as i said right um, um, in the background you know to whom you wanted to send that is one area and what you wanted to send to learner okay what you wanted to assign what you wanted to what you wanted learner to know about the course and all you know you'll be inserting complete message and you'll be setting a kind of notification option whether it has to be it has to be sent to mobile uh, work day application or desktop or work day application you'll be having a kind of option there so you'll be selecting that and you'll be submitting that so when you're submitting that there is an also there is an option also called uh, uh, reminders configure reminders Reminders. So you'll be configuring for every two days for every three days if you wanted to send a reminder You can configure that one and submit that one and based on that it will be doing that's the only job campaign will be doing It will be not recommending uh, any course information or it will not be recommending any kind of program information to learners But recommendation is available, right? Recommendation is there. Yeah, it's in uh, <clears throat> kind of uh, when you're actually creating course you have an option Okay, okay. But through campaign, you know, there is no kind of recommendation that you can have. Okay, and that's about mass enrollment that we discussed and browse learning content. Okay, browse learning content will be part of a learning dashboard. So every learner, you know, will be if they wanted to view the list of courses available in Workday and if they wanted to enroll their self um, into Workday, this is how, you know, they'll be navigated. They need to get it to learning dashboard. And click on browse learning content and from there you know it will be showing a list of courses and learner can pick any of the course and uh, enroll that and uh, go for training and business process business process as i said right a sequence of tasks you know that will be executed based on your um, the, in the way that you define the business process let's say okay my enrollment is there okay enrollment is there and if you wanted to define any kind of um, uh, notifications here or if you wanted to define any kind of conditions here um, the way how you wanted um, work the learning to be used or all can be managed through business process let's say courses are there okay and um, the, few organizations and will be giving a kind of flexibility to employees to enroll into the course um, the, you know on their own and complete the course and um, few organizations you know will be having kind of restrictions on enrollment okay if there is any course that is associated with cost okay employees should not have access to enroll into that particular course and once the employee enrolled into that course a kind of notification has to be triggered to the manager employees manager stating that this your team member has been um, uh, has been was been trying into enroll into this course but this course is associated with the cost and with where, you know it needs your approval once manager uh, clicks on that approval button then an you know, employee will be automatically enrolled into that particular course so all these kind of conditional um, kind of enrollments and all can be managed through business process so business okay. process is nothing but which allow you to perform the task in workday not only a specific to learning I can I'm saying but anything in workday business process allows you the security that you find in business process the conditions that you define in the business process the steps that you wanted to design in the business process all these things you know will be you know you'll be feeling that when you whenever you're actually performing those tasks you'll be feeling all those steps based on the configuration that you'll be, you'll be making let's say Okay, now the, the moment you know you submit the enrollment a kind of notification has to be to go to manager or uh, to the employee stating that enrollment has been completed as a learning administrator you will be enrolling that particular um, you know enrollment to the candidate but candidate should have information now so that enrollment has been done and the manager also some uh, in some cases manager also should be aware that uh, the manager's team member has been assigned to that particular compliance course so in order to achieve these kind of two uh, requirements you'll be configuring a kind of a notification in this business process and the moment you learn the moment learning administrator uh, uh, enrolls into that um, the notification will be triggered to employee as well as employees manager
Okay. So that will be doing the... there, are, there are by default business processes defined, is it? From birthday yes. itself. Yes. When we get. Yes. Minute. Yeah. So oh. there are uh, multiple uh, business process, you know, that are available in learning area and uh, based on your organization requirement, you can uh, choose uh, those business process and define your own steps. You cannot create new business process. You, you need to use oh. only the one that worked as provided, but you have an option to um, enhance the existing business process. If you wanted to add any kind of additional steps, if you wanted mm -hmm. to add any kind of condition rules to the existing business process based on your organization requirements, if you wanted to uh, assign any kind of uh, notifications to the business process or any kind of, uh, you know, uh, group of employees to that particular business process, uh, let's say uh, your workday learning is only live to your employees. And now, you know, the, um, uh, a notification has to be triggered um, Obviously, you know when it is live for only US employees, uh, business process uh, probably in future uh, uh, you have an option to expand your learning system to all other countries. So when you expand uh, <clears throat> to that uh, for the US employees, uh, you'll be currently providing access to enroll themselves. For but for other countries, uh, since the training has not completed, work the, tra work the learning training is not completed, you'll not allow them to enroll into the course on their own. So there, you know, you'll be defining a condition rule. Only US employees should be enrolled, and for um, other uh, uh, country employees, they will be not having access to enroll. Kind of restrictions, you know, you can define in business process. Anything you know that you wanted to uh, access related or any kind of task related, anything you know, you can control the business process in workday learning. Not only workday learning anywhere, but uh, any business process related learning will allow you to control anything that can be accessed uh, in learning area. Okay. And campaign we discussed. Um, it's nothing but you know you'll be assigning uh, you'll be assigning enrollments to employee, and um, in order to send a kind of reminders, you know you'll be using campaign. Mm -hmm and catalog learning catalog is nothing but uh, kind of uh, you know in dashboard you'll be having a kind of uh, you know learning items you know which will be showing uh, manage uh, some kind of different options like um, manage courses if you wanted to get into the courses or create courses if you wanted to create course or edit the course if you wanted to edit the course all these things you know will be uh, you know will be punched into a kind of learning catalog so learning catalog you know will be showing all these options like uh, in dashboard in learning dashboard for a learner you know it will be different for learning administrator it will be different so learning catalog provide a list of learning items uh, in the learning dashboard and course okay. course is so nothing but what you have multiple logs meaning um, for example I, I understand it's a library of courses right so yes. if it's library, library of, of learning of... items uh -huh. learning items yeah, learning items are you have a blended you have a course when i say course there are multiple types of courses one is digital course one is blended course yeah. one is program kind of uh, you know mm -hmm. different courses are there so all these uh, things are grouped under a catalog catalog okay so now if i have some course for example export control course that is only specific to us employees mm -hmm. So that should not be available for India employees, for example. Yeah. <clears throat> so so in that way, you know, probably you need to uh, define a topic actually and provide a different uh, security to that one. So <clears throat> what you can do is uh, generally whenever you create a course, okay. Mm -hmm. Whenever you create a course, there has to be a topic in the background. So a topic will be holding a course, right? So let's say you're creating uh, any courses related to benefits module. Okay, and uh, benefit enrollments or benefit, um, uh, you know, HIPAA courses kind of things, you know, you'll be creating in benefits area and this benefit courses shouldn't be sitting in uh, regular courses that you are assigning to employee should be sitting in a different uh, topic called <coughs> benefits. So you'll be creating a topic called benefits under benefits. You'll be assigning. You'll be creating all these courses and only to benefit team have to have access not you know all other employees will be uh, able to access this courses so only benefit team members should be able to have access this code so we'll be kind we'll be doing a kind of a, a filtering in the report in the standard report you know we'll be filtering this and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll be 
doing a kind of conditions only benefit stream should be able to access and no other team member should be able to access this course similarly the us employees that you are saying so we'll be creating a, a one topic you know <coughs> one, <coughs> one topic for that particular course and assign all these courses into that topic and at topic level we'll <coughs> we'll define a security that only us team member should be able to access and other than us no uh, member should be able to access this course kind of security we'll be defining we'll be seeing that we'll be configuring and we'll be showing that okay okay but in the so you have to restrict by topic but not through catalog is it no no not through catalog catalog is nothing better which will be giving you information these are the available courses these are the available blended courses these are available programs but there is nothing you know that you can play around with the catalog okay then what is the use of multiple catalogs then in the case one catalog will be enough for every everything right then in that case as i said right um, i know some organizations you know they wanted to have a, a specific catalog you know for only their team or specific catalog for uh, uh, executive uh, uh, you know board um, there will be different courses you know that uh, ceo level ta ceo staff has to perform so for those uh, ceo uh, ceo staff you know will be creating one catalog and what are the available courses for that ceo staff and <clears throat> similar leadership team and similarly employees so for uh, different levels you know we'll be having different set of courses that uh, they they can enroll and uh, complete that one so to uh, give a kind of flexibility to them pick the courses we'll be creating a separate catalog for them to pick the related courses uh, in that particular list so catalogs are also assigned to some uh, group is it group of users yeah. yes um, based so on uh, the security that we'll be defining based on security we'll be defining uh, let's say if you're part of a uh, cvc uh, you know city of staff okay executive leadership team so probably whatever security that is defined you know we'll be conferring uh, that particular security of the catalog and uh, that particular group of members you know, will be able to access that particular catalog in order to uh, you know access the courses that they are intended to perform Okay, I see there also can be restriction there. Um, so, okay, I think when we it's, see it, I it's get It's completely it. based on, you know, your um, organizational, uh, you know, how they wanted to have their entire course structure to be visible to employees. How they wanted right. to employees you know, to access it completely based on your organization requirement. And probably we'll be picking in a few scenarios and we'll be showing how it can be accessed. Okay. And course, course as I said, right? Um, we have two types of courses. One is digital course. One is blended course. Digital course is nothing but a kind of uh, you know virtual uh, thing. It can be recorded. It can be you know uh, uh, you know kind of webex kind of trainings. But blended courses are nothing but a kind of classroom training and instructor-led trainings. You know, instructor will be available to provide a training. The digital courses where instructor is not uh, required it can be a kind of virtual training through record mode recorded mode okay got it and uh, a group of blended courses are called programs <laughs> yeah. program is only collection of blended courses not yes. digital not not digital collection of uh, blended courses Oh, but mostly, you know, people will be, uh, you know, uh, because um, uh, you know, blended courses is nothing but a kind of instructor led training, right? Uh, so <clears throat> you'll be whenever you are assigning blended courses to team members, it will be a kind of, uh, uh, you know, uh, instructor led training one by one, let's say, uh, you know, in benefits area let's say in core HCM area so you have a kind of a required trainings you know that you need to um, you need to take um, which are kind of instructor led training so you will be picking all those instructor led trainings and you will be assigning it as a one program and this program will be assigned to an employee and until unless all those required trainings are completed you will not mark this program as completed in workday you know until unless those uh, team members are completed with all the trainings that are part of uh, uh, you know this program the employee will not be marked as complete in workday but when you assign a digital course <clears throat> 
digital course is a kind of you know uh, is not a kind of instructor led training so most of the customers you know, will prefer to have blended courses dumped into program but not a digital course you can actually if there is any any requirement that you can dump uh, uh, digital courses into program you can do that but um, uh, you know mostly instructor led training you know, will be assigned to an employee through program but uh, can't we have both uh, for example um maybe, you can uh, have you can uh, have you can have, have uh, yeah certification or something we can create as a program and uh, it can contain a fundamentals course a digital course and it can also contain uh, six sigma green belt core like that uh, instructor led course so so both together will be completing the program so we can add right you can have you can have you can have such kind of cases also okay if they, uh, it's completely you know, it depends upon your um, need how you wanted to have your program to be assigned and what has to be included in the program you can but uh, so far you know whatever implementation that i've done i've been i've been you know from business stakeholders of learning um, i used to get a kind of request on blended courses uh, group bundle, bund okay. bundle all the blended courses and assign it to a you know, employee as a program kind of request i got but not a kind of you know combination of both the digital as well as blended um, uh, you know most of the customers uh, you know where i'm implemented learning you know i've not seen uh, such kind of request but you can you can you know you have an option to uh, go for combination and uh, assign it as a program suppose uh, we have blended for example as you said uh, in a program there might be three blended courses put together as a program right we are assigning these blended courses we are assigning it right if we are not enrolling them we are assigning it only yes Isn't we are it? Assigning, yeah. yes okay. so um, okay, so suppose uh, when you are you know, let's say you have created a program okay now um, mm. program consists of uh, around you know, three to four courses now if you wanted to assign um, these courses uh, to employee when you are actually enrolling uh, that particular uh, when you go to enroll task or um, uh, you know if you are a manager of your administrator when you are actually enrolling system will ask you whether it has to be a digital course whether it has to be a digital blended course or it has to be a program it will ask you all these three information it will ask you so you can pick digital blended or program when you pick the program it will show you the list of programs that are available in the system and once you select the program and once you submit that program will be enrolled into that particular candidate uh, current candidate okay. uh, learnings record okay so for example when we are uh, um, assigning a assigning so just uh, clarify whether assigning and enrolling are same thing or different things um when you are actually the wanted to enroll employees into the learning you know there are different tasks okay uh -huh. one is mass enrollment one is uh, you know enroll um, enro uh, enroll content in a kind of business process is there so so through, through this business process you'll be enrolling but assigning is something you know where you are actually making learning course as a required for that employee through not in a manual process but through automated process through campaign through alert or through a kind of notification that you will be sending information to employee that you are assigned to this course and if you click on that link you will be having an option to enroll and you can enroll into the course and complete the training kind of option you'll be providing through or assigned a task like campaign like alert any kind of this these tasks okay so right now when we are uh, creating a program for a, for example i'm creating a program with two blended courses mm -hmm. and uh, i am assigning that particular program have you are assigning um, directly assigning or through campaign however i am assigning mm -hmm. so user has to complete both the courses to complete the program right yes yes both so both. if it i don't not have shown as a mark yeah but if i am not scheduling any offering for that blended course user cannot complete it right so you need, you need to actually schedule that one when you actually when you want to actually when we, are, 
creating a blended uh, course in a program a schedule has to be there or something like that or is it like uh, you can assign and uh, probably pro later you can uh, schedule it no you can assign it and you can also take care of uh, take care later but uh, mostly you know if you schedule a campaign it will automatically do its job right whenever you know it needs to be assigned and all but you can assign that um, particular program and probably offering part you know you can take care later that also can be done but mostly you know whenever you are actually assigning uh, anything to employee if it has to be a kind of um, a recurring process you will go for campaign or you will go for any kind of you know recurring process with alerts and all but if it is a kind of you know one time activity and uh, if a employee has to complete within this due date no need of scheduling that one uh, employee can um, based on the notification that work day uh, business process will be triggering employee can get into that particular uh, enrollment and uh, complete that uh, training uh, for all the blended courses that are part of the program okay so when and, we're creating a uh, program that means that we need to be uh, making sure that we are creating schedules also because uh, there's no point in assigning without uh, scheduling yeah. it right yes 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 okay that has to be kept in mind yeah yeah sorry one more question so when we complete a particular course right mm -hmm. um, do we get do, do when we when a user completes a particular course mm -hmm. uh, be it blended or digital mm -hmm. uh, does the user get a certificate of completion of that particular course okay so it's uh, depends upon you know the workday as per workday standards the, the kind of transcript uh, you know will be available in work if employee gets into uh, the transcript history all the listed completed courses will be showing in the transcript history and he can pick the course and uh, see a kind of delivered template of the completion of that particular transcript but if you wanted to have a kind of customized certificate customized transcript that employee has to get based on the completion that is done through custom development uh, <coughs> outside of work data will be developing that one but in built you know there is a activity called uh, <coughs> there are there is a kind of uh, in dashboard um, there is an option called transcript history so all the completions you know <coughs> will be coming into this transcript history and employee can pick the completed course and view the transcript so which shows that uh, the employee has completed uh, this training in that particular area on that particular date kind of transcript history you know you will be seeing that particular transcript okay so it's not like uh, we can get us we can uh, have a certificate of completion for each course we cannot for each course, let's say you are there and you have completed uh, 10 courses and you mm -hmm. wanted to view a kind of uh, you know uh, kind of certificate uh, in a pdf format okay if you wanted to view that one so you'll be getting into your transcript history and you'll be seeing all your completion completed courses and if you click on uh, any one of the hyperlink uh, you'll be having all those completed history and if you click any of the course you'll be key you'll be seeing a kind of work that delivered a transcript the card which will be showing okay. your name and the course name which has which is as completed it will be showing all this information only completed also courses will be completed yeah it will be showing uh, all the completed uh, courses will be part of this uh, transcript history transcript so if, history. if it is in if it is in progress or if it is not started mode you will be not seeing those courses in transcript history so we can uh, can we customize this transcript by yes. uh, yeah. like adding our company logo and Yes, Those kind and of that's what I said, right? If you have any kind of custom requirements, that has to be done outside of workday through custom development oh. tool. It's outside custom workday, isn't it? it's outside of work day there is a third party tool called a business intelligence reporting tool which will be associated with with work day you will be developing your uh, all those you know custom layout outside of work day and uh, you'll be inserting you'll be deploying the development into work day <coughs> you can start using those uh, custom layouts as per your requirements those are done through business intelligence reporting tool which are a kind of you know, programming related um, uh, tools actually which is built on java environment so is there any names for this tool or is it just called but, bir but but we call it as but okay okay 
So that is only specific to work day, or it is uh, you can connect any other system. No, no, specific to work day. It is actually oh, okay. public uh, tool, but work day uh, is also associated with that. Only work day system will be connect <coughs> connected to it. No other system will be connected to that. Oh, but uh, outside yeah. of outside of that, it can also connect to Mule Soft. It can also connect to Azure. But whatever you know, work day is associated with. You need to connect to only work day tenant. You need to provide a work day URL. Then only with your login ID password. Then only it will be connecting to work day. Or else it will be not. Suppose we create uh, we uh, create using Bird tool. How will we import to Workday? So you'll be having a report actually. You'll be creating a report and um, you'll be assigning that report to the learning dashboard and um, to the learning report. You know whatever Bird uh, layout will be there. You know, you'll be deploying that to the report and that report um, custom uh, design you know, that you have designed through Bird can be accessed in learning dashboard through the custom report dashboard is nothing but in the background all those are reports only in learning dashboard <laughs> whatever items are there all those are reports only in the background you will be assigning this BERT layout to the report and that report will be generating your certificate or your transcript in a way that you wanted to have okay 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 Okay, so probably we are um, about our time. We'll continue our discussion and probably we'll get into our tenant. Okay, great. Okay. Thank you. And you take Bye. care. Thanks. Bye.